Drill Press Table, Episode 2. Time to finish it. Welcome back to the shop of my channel and the continuing adventure of the new table for the drill press. So where are we at? Um, I've banded the edges all the way around with the uh, Formica. Uh, in this video, of course, I'm going to show you putting the other, you've probably seen it dozens of times from other YouTubers. I'm going to go ahead and show you putting the top on and then, and then uh, routing off and cleaning up all the edges. <clears throat> so what I have here are the four uh, T-tracks that are going on. I got these from Amazon. They're, they're they link in the description. These are, are not from the regular blue guys. These is from Power or something. Here, I'll link in the description and who they came from. I mean, who, who made them. <clears throat> also, I made four saddles like this to go underneath the bench to screw in the, uh, to hold the bench in place. You can see here that it's basically one screw in the center it's an 832 screw and you just tighten it down and it's done and this won't move anymore. It'll stay right where it is. Even though it move, won't move anywhere, with the way I've set up the inserts to go into the diagonal slots, that'll hold it in place so it can't move up and down for any reason, not that it should. But anyhow, so let's get started on doing the uh, top and then we'll discuss the gearing mechanism that's going to go on here and the adjustment that the locking piece that's going to go over here and how that's going to work. Ready to go, I think, I hope, maybe. So let's take a look. I got the Formica, oops, shiny side down, and paper protecting everything from the goop, which is the contact cement. The, um, the bench, the tabletop, table for the drill press here, you know how this works. You basically spread the stuff on, let it get to the point where it's not even tacky anymore, and then you flip over your Formica and use the rollers to keep it off the workpiece until you're ready to fasten it down, because once this is touching each other, it is not moving. So you got to get that done. Applying the, uh, the, uh, the goop, the contact cement, a foam roller. This is a one-shot deal. This will get thrown out, this will get thrown out because the stuff starts to evaporate and uh, it just becomes a goopy mess. So let's, let's start. i got to pour a little bit in here. A little bit more than a little bit because I'm doing a lot of surface area. Okay. And then start getting this rolling. It takes a bit to get it. There we go. Start rolling it on. Okay, that's done. Now, I want to move this out of the way just a wee bit and let that do its drying thing and then move the drill press table over and start gooping this up. Okay, those are now ready. So we wait, wait till this gets to that, it's about 15 minutes or so, till it gets to that point where it, your fingers don't stick to it anymore. Then we put the stickers on, then we put the Formica on and start rolling it down. So we'll be on that in a second. How about that? I didn't turn the camera on when I put this down, but let me describe what happened. I put the rollers in place. Oriented the plastic, the the metal, the uh, the uh, formica the way I wanted it, and when I had it the way I wanted, this way and this way and where I wanted it, I pulled out the center roller and started feeding, rubbing it down, rubbing it down, rubbing it down, rubbing it down. Move the rollers out further so I don't get any bubbles under it. And now, since that's done, I take the J roller and roll it onto the workpiece. So now we let this cure for a while. Uh, I mean, I, I can trim it right now, but I, I really like to let it sit for a little while before I do the trimming. And once we're ready, I'll bring over the trim router and we'll start cutting this out. We'll make a mess, but we'll start cutting around and around and around. And then I'm going to do a little thing. I don't have a, the angled trim router that you use for, for my cabinet countertops, but there's an old trick you used to use. It's not really a trick. It's an old technique. You do the straight cut all the way around, then you take a fine file and you put that slight bevel edge all the way around it. Um, not a lost art, but 
since we have the tools to do it mechanically, you're like, uh, you don't need that. But I don't have that router bit. I just have a straight bit. So that's what we're going to do. So next, next thing is to do this, clean it, make it look, and put it in place. Kind of. Now let's trim it. Uh, I've got it clamped on the bench with the bench dogs and the side vise, the end vise. And I got my trim router with the half inch flush mounting, flush cutting bottom bearing bit. Believe it or not, I did not have a bottom, bottom bearing router bit when I started this project. I had to get one. So let's do some, uh, let's do some trimming. See how, uh, how neat I can make this. Always with the ears and of course with the tunes. Helps if I have the right app up. There we go. Cool. Oops. Dust collection. Try to keep most of the bits in the dust collector. It's trimmed um, all the way around. I have a little cleanup to do. Uh, no big deal. That's cool. I'm going to do that filing thing anyway. And um, now I want to do the hole. Well, I need to drill a hole in there first. Drill bit. Um, I'm going to come as close to the edge as I can. Like here, I can feel where it, it bows in a little bit. Yeah. There we go. Okay, so now, I may have made a mistake there. Maybe, maybe not. Now what I want to do is, is put the bit in there and route this completely out. Let's see if it's going to work. It's not going to catch on anything. You know what? I think I need to change this height a little bit. Let's see what we got. Again with the ears. Aha. The problem is, is the bit, um, it's riding on the bearing, uh, excuse me, the bearing screw. So let me make some adjustments here and see if I can get this to, to do what I need it to do. All right, I think I got it adjusted. Hopefully I've got it adjusted correctly now. Let's try this again. And there it is. Pretty much a, looks like almost a pretty much a perfect fit. Um, I have to do a little bit of more working on the, this edge. I have to do some filing of the, uh, of the uh, um, formica a little bit. It's because, you know, the bits aren't always perfect. But that looks pretty good. So, the top is basically ready to go. And here it is, in situ. Anyway, um, so I've got it where I want it. I've actually taken two of the saddles I showed earlier, and I've fastened this to the, uh, to the, to the drill press table, the, the metal one, to, uh, to keep, keep it in place for what's coming up next. Now, the next step, before I cut the uh, dados, the next step is going to be putting in the system for the hand crank. And what does that consist of? So we start with, first of all, all the shafts around this thing are 14 millimeters, so everything has to be 14 millimeters. So it starts with a set of 90 degree gears. I shall bring these closer to the camera. 90 degree gears. You can get these off of Amazon, or I got my master car. Usually I buy my stuff like this from a master car, but Amazon had them. So those are 90 degree gears. Then I have a piece of, from a master car, I have a piece of, link in the description, 14 millimeter steel rod which is going to require a little cutting and shaping, you know, because. And then from McMaster car, I have a hand wheel. Now, this is going to be down here, thereabouts, lower than that, actually. And uh, the hand wheel is going to be below the surface. So it won't interfere with anything that's on, on the, uh, 
on the on the on the drill press. Now there's a, something a little little more added stuff that I need to do, and that is a stop collar, stop collar, because the shafts is going to be sitting in two wooden blocks up with the angle gears at the end, and there's nothing to keep it from sliding back out again. So, and I'll show you in a minute how it's going to work. But stop collars are going to go on a stop collar is going on the metal shaft uh, where the gears are, where the bracket holding it is, so that it won't slide back out of the way and keep the gears meshed in place. On the other side, over here, for the uh, lock, it's a simple shaft. Um, 14 millimeter shaft is going to come out, and I may use the old crank handle as the locking handle over here. But let's get started on how I'm going to make this work uh, underneath. And it all begins with lasers. Well, no sharks and lasers, just a laser. So the datum for the gearing and everything is this shaft right here, which is the crank for the rack and pinion gear that runs the table up and down. So you basically have the laser running through the center of that and runs all the way out to here. Now what I need to do is take a piece of wood like so and mark the center of where the laser hits that, and that's where I drill a hole for the shaft that's going to come uh, through this piece. There'll be one here, a piece here, and a piece here to hold it all together. Um, but again, where, there it is. Oh, I, I got to turn the laser. But anyway, I need one, at least one, we're marked in the right place, and that's where the hole's going to be drilled. Now, the shaft, let me get, so the, the gear goes here, and the 90 degree gear will mesh with that gear. I don't know if you can see that in camera very well. And it'll follow that line right there with the laser. And it'll uh, basically easy crank up and down no problem. And the stop block goes right about here, on the other side of the wood that holds it here, and prevents this rod from backing out and keeping those gears enmeshed. Dado's cut for the uh, for the T-track. Got a little bit of a got a little bit of chip out on one of these um, dado cuts, but that's okay. Not a problem. I may replace the front. I don't know. But anyway, there it is. Uh, now it's on to other stuff. Um, getting this thing mounted up and with all the gears and everything. Table is done. You see here the difference in size between the old one and the new one. I've got more this way and I've got more this way. I can do more stuff, maybe. So I, the uh, T-Track, of course, is in place and ready to go. Now on the back, let me show you what we got on the back here, or on the bottom of it, as it were. Did a little grinding here because some of these, these screws came through when putting in the T-Track, so I had to grind off some metal. No big deal. So there's the lugs for holding it in place. These two pieces of wood here with the holes drilled in them, that's the long shaft that's going to go back to the hand crank. This smaller one over here is for the uh, lock and unlock handle for the, uh, for the, uh, um, the whole assembly to, to lock it onto the, uh, to the post. So that's where we are with that. Let me show you where I am with the parts. First thing I need to do is, or mention, is I decided to go with a larger set of bevel gears. These are uh, a little more robust, and they're going to work a little better. And they actually fit the shafts better, the 17 millimeter shaft better. So I got these. This is the crankshaft that's going to hmm, crankshaft. This is the shaft that's going to crank the uh, table up and down. And everything where there's going to be a set screw, I've ground a flat on the uh, on the shaft. This is this is the stop collar that's going to keep it from shifting around. And of course, behind that will be. A washer, and there's also a washer between the hand crank and the wood that's, that it sits in. Now, for the for the locking mechanism on the back, it's a little different. I have this uh, Master Car aluminum thick wall tubing that uh, is half inch uh, ID, and um, this set 14 millimeter uh, handle on the uh, on on the lock. So what I did was I just drilled this out. 
14 millimeters, left the half inch side the way it was, and cut off a piece of half inch steel rod to, uh, to mount this to the crank handle. And on the end of that, the, since I'm using half inch stock, the, the old handle for the hand crank here wouldn't work. So I got this little handle here. Uh, I think this is also a McMaster car, maybe. There'll be a link for everything in the description. This may be Amazon, I'm not sure. This is Amazon, I'm not sure. So what I did was, for locking, I drilled and tapped 1032 holes in the, the thick aluminum collar and on both sides of the uh, handle, which is 1032. And on the shaft, of course, I did a flat on one side for the handle and a, and a, fl and a flat on one side for the, uh, for this, the stop, the big round collar. So everything is ready. Let's assemble it. First thing we've got to do is mount this up onto the, the table itself, which requires a little bit of twisting this time because of the supports for the, for the uh, shafts. And now I need to screw in the saddles to hold it in place, hopefully for the last time. Now, if we can keep this in focus as I move around, let's put this gear on here, like that, and we'll tighten up the set screws when we get to that point. And then move to putting the crank shaft, the cranking shaft. So this goes in here, and then the washer and the stop collar. And I'll tighten that down later. And then the next gear goes in here. And oops, you know what? These are slightly different. There we go, that's the way I want it. Okay. So those are those are ready to be tightened down. Right now I want to tighten down the stop collar. So they can't back out, even if there's a little play at the other end. All right, now we'll take care of the gears. Now if I can keep this in focus while I do this, because I'm going to get in and out of the camera. So I'm lined up with this flat here. And I'm going to tighten that one down a little bit. I mean, these can be adjusted in and out a little bit if the mesh isn't quite right. And I marked the end of the shaft where the flat is, which is right where it is now. So. Like I said, the adjustment on those gears can be such that we have, we can change the mesh of the gears easily. I'm just redoing this stop collar because I had to move it out of the way. Let's do the other side now. First thing I'm going to do is install this collar in place. I didn't have to put a flat on this on the handle because it's it's knurled, and this stuff ain't going to move. And I can get this tight. So I, I want to get this to the point where where I want it to be tight, and that way I can get everything lined up correctly. And that means the handle on the outside here. So now the shaft goes in here. It goes into the stop there. I'll tighten that down. Let's see. Yep, there's the flat. Hope this, I don't think this is going to be in focus, but what the hell, couldn't hurt. All right, now. This handle, I want it just like that, so it's out of the way when everything's tightened up. In case anybody's wondering what the tap drill size is for 1032, it's a number 21 drill. <laughs> All right, now I gotta adjust this a little bit. There we 
go. And then tighten it down completely. That's why I put two set screws in this end so that it would have a good bite, good purchase. Okay. That looks good to me. Voila. Now, I'll crank it up and down. You'll see it's all tight in one direction, and that's because I need to check the mesh of the gears and get, the, get that mesh correct. If they're too loose or too tight, you wind up with binding or, or slipping. So, going down, going up. Yep, that's, those gears are not quite meshed right, but it goes down real easy. And then the handle comes over to lock it. That's it. This is my new drill press table. Uh, hopefully I have all the resources in the uh, description below. And um, I don't have any plans because this is a good, there's a million ways to make these things. Make it any way you want. But here's some ideas for making cranking and locking and all that kind of stuff easier. So until next time, make great things out of wood. Build a drill press table.